Right, welcome back. Joining me right now is Marvelous Wanchiku, a global market analyst, uh, Passion Partners Limited. Hello, Marvelous, and thanks for joining me on the show today. Uh, my pleasure. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I don't know if you listened to some of the respondents there. Our team went out to the streets to find out how Nigerians feel uh, concerning, uh, you know, their living standards, hunger, as well as the disposable income. What, what's your reaction to some of the clips that we played earlier? Um, I would say that it was, it was not inevitable in the sense that um, there was a lockdown. So it was going to come with reduced um, purchasing power for for Nigerians. So it's it's more like a follow through, following the um, the lockdown. It was it was going to happen. Were there some things that perhaps would have been done to ameliorate the sufferings of Nigerians during the lockdown? Yes. During the lockdown or even before the lockdown, because COVID-19 pandemic hit China around November or December, you know, so, and it came into the country in February. So perhaps for people that watch this kind of things would have known that perhaps it's spreading. What can we do, you know, uh, to protect ourselves? I would say just um, would have done better in social assistance where we were able to, okay, we know that this thing was going to eventually come into Nigeria, that's the COVID outbreak. So we would, um, we would have pushed more for social assistance, helping people and trying to preserve jobs as well. What do you think about the, uh, the socioeconomic impact of COVID-19 as released by the NBS? I think it was also done in conjunction with the World Bank. Uh, the, the data did tell us that in Kano, Rivers, uh, Lagos, as well as FCT, the numbers were not were not really looking good. What's your assessment? Well, according to the report, from my take was that the there was reduced income. So, in as much as some people had to lose their means of livelihood, people that still maintain their means of livelihood and now have lower income than than what they would have had pre-COVID. So, these things were they were kind of to me they were kind of inevitable. It was going to come with the outbreak, and I know it's not—it's not just peculiar to Nigeria. It's—it's it's quite a global issue. Mm. Now, some some of the key points of the data, which I'm looking at here, says that the share of people engaged in economic activities in four states, which I mentioned earlier, were lower in June, July than before the COVID-19 crisis, especially in FCT Abuja, where you are, and as well as I am, where the share of people working was down by around 14 percentage points. So that means that the number of people working in Abuja have reduced by 14%. Is there a cause for worry? Since that this, this is even the nation's capital, you know, people go to Lagos, Port Harcourt, Abuja, and the rate of people not working have reduced by 14%. A case to worry? Well, there are two sides to it. Yes, it's a case to worry, but the report also states that um, there was a movement from the industry to agriculture in this in these states as well. So we are believing that the reduction in um, share of Nigerians working to earn an income, it's, it's, it's just a shift from one industry to the other, from the the industry where okay we have many workers to now the agricultural industry the trade and commerce industry so i think eventually there'll be a balance where so there'll be a balance eventually so it's just like people stopped working as per industry and they're moving into agriculture they're moving into retail and commerce so eventually there should be a balance but the report also stated that incomes may be precarious even along that that those sectors you know because like you said uh, people have moved from industry to agriculture, especially in Rivers and Kano. But in Lagos, yeah. a bit of industry is still there. But they did also mention that incomes may just be a bit precarious. Yeah, and that is that's a fact because now it's not we're not sure. So something I would have been um, probably I'm taking I'm having this economic activity, and at the end of the day, I'm getting like ten thousand naira. Now, I'm not even sure of that 10,000 naira because of the way things are going. It might have reduced to 8,000 naira, and it's nothing about um, inflation or anything. It's just how the economy is right now. Income has become vulnerable. Like, we're not, it's not static any longer, basically. 
what do you have to say about the food insecurity that is yes food insecurity that is prevalent in some of those states as also noticed by the MBS which uh, in its report says that food insecurity appears to be prevalent in all four states especially in Rivers and FCT Abuja where 79 percent of households and 72 percent of households respectively reported having to skip meals at the start of the pandemic so that means that 72% uh, of households in Abuja skip meals, 79% of households skip meals in River State. So I would say that it's not um, skipping meal. And I think the report also states that um, across these four states, there are households that run out of food because of um, lack of money and other resources. So it's all hinged on the fact that um, the of Nigerians have less access to money they have reduced income. They just have reduced purchasing power now. So something I would have gotten earlier with my um, with my ten thousand naira. Now I have only like five thousand naira to get those things. So the system running out of food, skipping meals just to make ends meet. And some households were, to, were reportedly live, are reportedly living out of their savings as well as borrowing money. So it's like it's not. Um, they, it's just a reduction in income and the fact that people were laid off. So it's more like a ripple effect of the first two um, things we stated. What do you think will be the socioeconomic impact of this? Because if people do not have incomes anymore or their incomes are reduced or they're drawing down on their savings in some of those states, what are the challenges that these kind of things pose? Uh, because we are a country that is already faced with insecurity. We are a country faced with unemployment. So how much of this would also impact some of the socioeconomic ills which we are experiencing right now? Because they say a hungry man is an angry man. Yeah, true. So I'll try to be, um, I'll try to be optimistic about this. I want to believe that Nigerians are hardworking people. So um, would have a greater percentage of we have a greater percentage of Nigerians going into commerce and industry, having more um, online businesses, having more, we have more vendors for different services. And on the flip side of it, we also have a slight increase. I'm just being optimistic, so that's why I'm saying slight. A slight increase in um, security issues where people would have to be more cautious at um, security wise and all of that. But I'm, I'm just hoping that most Nigerians will just move into. Um, um, they'll just be self-employed where they just start something, um, all this handwork and everything just to keep and um, just to make ends meet. Hello YouTubers, welcome to Moneyline with Nancy TV YouTube channel. This is where we provide you with instructive business directions, processes and guidance to help you assess the right resources to fund your businesses to withstand every form of internal and external shock. You will find here awesome informative videos on business, entrepreneurship, and lifestyle just to help you make informed business and financial decisions. Punch the subscribe button and let us drive you through the world of business. Please follow all our social media platforms on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, and follow us for latest updates on our website. What do you think that those states that are concerned should do? Because it seems that even with the different palliative measures or interventions, uh, even from government as well as uh, private sectors, such as CACOVID, doing some interventions in states, it seems not to be working. So what should these states do? And I'm not just even talking about these four states reflected uh, on this report. Things like this, really, it's, <laughs> it's almost in every state in the country. Yeah. So I'll still, it's, I think for me, I feel it still boils down to social assistance, where the government comes up with, um, aside to palliatives, come up with um, programs that assist um, indigents of states, that assist residents, rather, of states, where there's a program to help them learn um, a handwork, or just to learn something to keep them moving, to generate income for themselves. Because in the long run, if these things are neglected, neglected, the we'll feel it like as a nation and not just in that state. If there's a security issue in a particular state, people tend to leave that place, go to, go to another state. Before you know, there's overpopulation in a said state. So I think the government should just come up with more 
um, programs to assist people, to assist um, residents generate income even for themselves. Marvellous, the question is, government is doing that right now. Different state governments, okay. yes, the different state governments are doing that. Different state governments have some kind of vocational training for its residents or citizens, uh, some kind of, you know, social assistance. But it seems not to be working. Should the model, should there be a, a, a strategy or should, you, uh, should the government re-strategize? Should a new model come up with? Because it seems with all these efforts, it's still not catching up. The federal government on its part has the uh, 5,000 Naira uh, social uh, conditional cash transfer, the homeschool feeding program, the end power program, you know, and all of that. But it seems even with all of this, Nigerians are still getting poorer and unemployment is still high. I, I understand where you're coming from. But at the same time, I feel that there should be more um, policies in place to make sure that Nigerians as the event will eventually get will benefit from these programs because it seems that yeah in as much as the programs are for Nigerians it's not uh, they don't directly benefit from it so I think more policies should be put in place to checkmate the these programs to make sure that um, Nigerians are taking full benefit of the, the programs. How do you think that this uh, uh, economic output contraction? which we have suffered in the second quarter, how do you think it will play out? At least in the next uh, few months, we're going to be expecting also the third quarter GDP numbers uh, by the NBS. And according to economists, after two successive quarters of contraction, the economy and the economy will be set to be in a recession. So w w w yes, w what are your expectations? Oh, the expectation is by, I think for 2020, we should be expecting for that contraction, but towards the, we should be also expecting a recovery towards mid-2021. Okay, that is your own analysis. Why did you, yes, yes. Why did you say we would, yes, yes. Why did you say we would have a recovery mid-2021? It's based on what? So the, we expect that from by 2021, there should be hopefully, or well, it's all hinged on the outcome of this COVID pandemic. So eventually, if we have a, um, if we have the vaccine ready and the pandemic dies down, people there will be a slow recovery as to act, economic activities globally, and businesses in Nigeria as well will begin to ease off of the um, impact the pandemic had on them. So it, there'll be a recovery globally and I know Nigeria won't be an exception. How do you, how, how do you see that businesses should uh, recover? Because the pandemic has changed the world of business as we know it. You know, some yeah. sectors may suffer even when we recover, even when there is a vaccine. Some sector may not be as buoyant as they used to be with uh, prior uh, COVID-19 or during the old normal. With the new normal, even if there is a vaccine, some sectors will still not be up there. I hope you understand what I'm saying. T looking at sectors yeah. such as aviation, for example, some people may just say, why should I still travel? Even though there is a vaccine, I can stay in my house and do the board meeting or attend the meeting via virtually or what have you. So how do you see recovery for businesses moving forward? Well, it's going to be, just with the example you just gave of aviation, it's going to be very slow. Um, I also want to believe that people were stuck in different parts pre-lockdown. So um, when the lock, as lockdown eases and international travels um, come back to play, people would, um, the aviation industry will see some flows where people will still want to travel back to their families or back to their, um, their residences. So I feel it's going to be a very slow and eventual um, recovery. And some industries that are faced with um, the new normal um, mantra would have to reinvent something or just find a better way to go about things. Now, with uh, households, uh, household income reducing, how do you think that all the interventions by governments, government across board, uh, both physical and monetary authorities, uh, those interventions, are they working? Well, we can't really say for sure because 
the thing is, if a government comes up with an intervention today, it's going to, it's not, we're not going to see the immediate effect. We're not going to see an immediate effect. It's going to take a while for us to see, okay, because we can't use pre-COVID to pre-COVID and pre-intervention to state, okay, is this intervention working or post-intervention rather? We can't say if it's working yet or how effective it, it, it is. So we'd have to give it um, more time to really understand how the intervention had an impact on on income. Uh, marvelous. Um what do you expect the government to do moving forward? Because the National Economic Sustainability Plan projects 2.3 trillion naira are for the economy within this period for us to be able to recover. Um, the CBN2 is also doing its own part. Um, what do you expect the government to do more vis-a-vis um, -vis the position of the government right now physically? Well, it's expected that the, um, I think, um, what would, more funds will probably help us as a nation, like as government wise. So probably um, have more access to money that DMO having to um, increase, uh, that's to borrow more basically, needing more funds to help the intervention, to help the plans, the all, both the fiscal and just to help the plans. They'll just be needing more funds for that. And we have the DMO, DMO can help um, we can get funds as well from Nigerians as well as but, foreign but investors. But Niger Nigerians are really averse to our debt profile right now. Our debt profile is up. Though the debt to GDP ratio is not as high as other countries. But what a lot of analysts are really uh, disturbed about is debt to revenue, uh, revenue uh, and the servicing of those debts. I think last time um, the... DG, um, Director General of DMO, she, she, she had explicitly stated that Nigeria is covered for debt servicing for the year. So debt servicing should not be a source of worry as, as at now, because we are kind of covered in that area. And the thing is, we need more, if, um, the, if the government needs more money, they'll need to get more money. And they can as well get the, get the money from funds from foreign investors. The question is that we are servicing our debt, but the question is debt servicing to revenue because a lot of our revenue goes into debt servicing. Debt servicing. And even the revenue itself is challenged because all price is going down. All price is not at an all time high, so to speak. You understand what I mean? So, yes, yeah. yeah, so we are challenged. So, the little money we are getting, we will definitely service our debt. The remaining one goes to, to other, other, of course, recurrent expenditure first. Then perhaps the little yeah. part of it will go to capex. So it's just to generate more forms of revenue for the government. How but they how, still bring it down? To how do you think it should be I, done? Because is it through taxes? VAT has been increased seven point five percent. We explored the tax region. That there has been um, a hike in the so. Uh, Nigerians are to pay more taxes right now. So we have explored that region to raise revenue as well. Um, the government, I think we can also um, create more, it is still brought down to more expenditure because if we say we want to create more, um, more avenues for income, to generate income for the government, we'd have to first um, invest in capital expenditure to help generate the income. So it's just a circle on its own. Okay, I think we'll leave it at that. Thank you very much, Marvelous Machuku, for joining us on the show today. Thanks for having me. All right, I'll be speaking with Marvelous Machuku, Global Market Analyst, Passion uh, Partners uh, Limited. That's the much we can take with her. Uh, it's a Wednesday, so the CBN Weekly segment today. Uh, we're taking you through one of the interventions uh, that the Apex Bank is uh, doing in the palm oil sector. Uh, because the CBN announced a few months ago that it will get involved in 10 commodities uh, in the value chain of those 10 commodities to be able to diversify the economy. So we're bringing you today uh, the palm oil intervention. Uh, don't forget that other commodities include, I think, rice, cocoa, tomatoes, livestock, uh, palm oil. Which other one? How many have I counted? Okay, let's just quickly take this. And we'll be right back to take your comments. I would I want to hear from all of you that are watching how 
um, your disposable income has been doing. Um, if you are in Abuja, Kano, Rivers, Lagos, according to the MBS, uh, we are not living well because I'm also part of it. Uh, so do send us your comments on all our social media handles. Let's quickly take this over right back. All right, welcome back uh, from the CBN weekly segment. We just have a few more minutes to the end of the uh, program. But just like you heard from that uh, clip, uh, we have so much to do, especially in uh, different commodities value chain. I've always said it many times on the program, there is no need for us to export raw produce. The problem is why should we just even export raw cocoa, raw crude, and we import the processed or the finished products you know, like chocolates, like refined fuel and all of that. We need, you know, to enhance the value chain. That's how we can create jobs. If you take a look at palm oil, which uh, the clip said earlier, uh, talked about palm oil, I think uh, India and Indonesia are the two biggest countries in terms of biggest users uh, in the world. Uh, Indonesia, about 6 million tons, uh, while India, uh, it's about, that's the usage, about 9.4 million tons of palm oil. Uh, when we come to some of the commodities we're blessed with, like cassava, Nigeria is the biggest producer, palm oil, we're not the biggest producer, but we're, I think, the fifth largest producers uh, in the world. We produce in states like uh, Abia, Cross River, Akwaibom, Bayelsa, Undo, Delta, which other states? You know, just a few other states, especially in the south or even in the southeast region of the country. So who says that we cannot make money from some of these commodities and not just exporting them, but we need to create, um, we need to add value along the chain and that will be what will create jobs in the state. So the governors of states in Nigeria need to be doing more than they are doing right now to create jobs for their citizens, Insecurity in the country is high. People are getting impatient with the government. We're seeing insecurity, all shades of insecurity right now in the country. I was told just a few days ago, someone parked his car in Meitama. Meitama here in Abuja is one of the high brow areas. And just before he went into an office and came back, his car was vandalized, brought daylight. So things are not as good as they should be. Nigerians do not have jobs, 27.1% unemployment rate. The GDP contraction of 6% is not helping matters. So we really need to put on our thinking caps and not just putting on, on, on our thinking caps to perhaps re-strategize that if what we're doing is not working, let's follow another route that will work. If what we have on paper could work, then let's do the work and stop the talk. We need to act. All right, you can join us on all our social media platforms. We just have a few minutes, perhaps around three, four minutes to the end of the program. You can send us your comments on uh, Twitter, Moneyline TV on Twitter. You can also send me your comments uh, on Twitter at Nancy Ilo. You can also find us on Facebook, Moneyline with Nancy TV. Uh, join us also on YouTube. Go to our channel, Moneyline with Nancy TV, and don't forget to subscribe as well as like. I'm seeing uh, uh, some comments on Twitter. Let's see if we can take them. Okay, Excel02 on Twitter is saying the increase in petrol price and electricity tariffs was miscalculated and premature. Nigerians are suffering. Such policy shouldn't have been set, rolling in times like this when COVID-19 is ravaging the world. Mm. Okay, Hilary in the middle is saying the average Nigerian needs all the cover at the, at, the, at the given that the pandemic has thrown a lot of challenges to all and sundry, the misery index of the average Nigerian has naturally been heightened compared, uh, coupled 
with a lot of economic and social political issues that abound. The misery index is high. So Nigerians are in misery right now. It's not a matter of you're saying doom. It's a matter of fact. Misery index is calculatable. Unemployment, inflation, GDP numbers, you know, it's calculatable. So Nigerians are living in a misery, just like Hillary in the Mille has said on a Twitter. All right, I think that's the much we can take on today's edition of the program. Thank you all for being a part of the show. Thank you for investing your time uh, with us. There is also a repeat broadcast of this show in the night, in case you don't get to watch it in the morning. And if you are one of those that don't sleep very early, so you can watch this program at night on the same channel. I am Nancy Naji, be the best version of yourself. And don't forget to keep safe. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye now. Thank you for watching our video. Please hit the subscribe button below, turn on post notification to follow all our updates.